afternoon, everybody. Right. Okay, you wonderful, enthusiastic people. It is my honour and my privilege this afternoon to introduce you Donna Benjamin, who's going to teach us, very, very newbies especially, what all we need to know about Inkscape. Please make her feel welcome. Hello. Have I, uh, oh, just sound, yeah, I've just turned it on. Hopefully it's all good. How is everyone? Hot. Hot. Apparently the air conditioning, we've just pressed the button and hopefully it will kick in soon and it will chill a little in here. Um, how's your conference going? Beautiful. Hot. Hot. <laughs> this is the theme. Okay, so welcome to Inkscape for absolute beginners. Hands up if you are an Inkscape total newbie, totally newbie. Probably about half of you, a bit more, maybe a bit more than half of you. Hands up if you are a closet Inkscape developer, like in my first tutorial. <laughs> None of you. Phew. Okay, good. I can't report the bug. That's that's good. That's good. But you're not you're not John Cruz. No. No. Okay. You know I'm not John. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just checking. Just checking, Ian. Okay. I do run the dev line now. Very good. So. Okay, hands up who, are, who of you are quite familiar with Inkscape and use it regularly? One, two, any, and okay, maybe just a little bit down from there. You wouldn't, you, you've got your imposter syndrome in the way, but you do know what Inkscape is and you've used it. Yeah, okay, a few more of you. Okay, so those of you who are more familiar than our absolute newbies, I would actually like your help. Because I want us to be, I want this to be a learning kind of environment where we, are, where we get to talk to each other and we're collaborative. And so if someone on your table, please come on in. Please come on in. Um, and if you, if you are able to help out your, um, your, fellow, your fellow learner who is a bit stuck, then, 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 please, then please do so. On the other hand, if you're completely new and one of those experts starts bossing you around, tell them to back off if that, you know, just be, uh, be gentle with each other, but also own your own learning. Is that, is that okay for some ground rules? Yeah? Okay, so um, I don't have slides. I have Inkscape up in its most bare, um, basic form. I've turned off all of the tools and commands and windows and widgets and things. And I'm going to turn them back on one by one and discuss and, and talk about what they are. I'm also going to do something a bit new. Hands up if you've actually been to one of my tutorials before. I think there are a couple of familiar faces. Okay, cool. So this I haven't done, so it's a bit of an experiment. So go easy on me. We'll see how it goes. You may have noticed that on the table is this crazy stuff called paper what? and a pen. Yeah? Now, I, I, didn't, I only got 20 pens, so I'm hoping that at least some people would have additional pens. Um, but there should be enough paper to go around. Yes? Where do you put the USB stick in? Yeah, unfortunately, I don't think it came with the USB port. Might be a... <laughs> Good one. Um, there's a couple of extra pens over here I'm going to go over and grab. So what I actually wanted you to do is to sort of think about what you're seeing on the screen right now, which is a big blank piece of paper, effectively. It's the canvas and the page. So outside the, the, the A4 lines, does anyone, anyone else need these two pens? Please don't, yeah, don't sit there. Try and sit over there. Very good. Anyone need pens? I just stole the pens from, how about I give them back to this table? Because I just stole them from there. Thank you. Yeah, very welcome. There you go. Okay, so blank, sh blank sheet of paper, both metaphorically on the screen and actually on your desk. What I want you to do is grab a piece of paper and a pen and draw a house. I am not expecting Leonardo da Vinci architectural drawings. I 
am not expecting anything much, but a house should be something all of us, I hope, can conceptualise and draw to some extent. I just want, just draw a house. Yeah, I don't know how great a video this is going to be for you guys at home, but by all means, stick with it. Maybe you can speed it up and put it on fast forward and see when interesting things happen. How's the house drawing going? It's very, I'm seeing concentration and, and, and drawing things happening, so this is good. Do I have some examples ready to, ready to share? They're awesome. Thank you very much, Rusty. Anyone else finished? Hand, up in the air, finished? Or hands up if you want a little bit more time. A bit more time? Some architectural drawings going on over here. I need my other glasses. You need your other glasses. OK, great. So as, as, um, as people are finishing off, have a little bit of think about what you've drawn. What shapes? did you draw? What elements did you put on in your house? Breaking it down, look at it a little bit critically. Sort of now you've been the, you've been the artist, now be the, the critic or the editor of that work. Think about the components that went into your drawing. <laughs> so one of the things about Inkscape is it is an illustration tool. It is a tool for drawing. Sadly, I cannot teach you how to draw. I wish I could. And there are people who can, and you can definitely learn how to do it. But that's not one of my secret superpowers to help unleash that in you. But hopefully, I can help you discover the tools and techniques of Inkscape itself to facilitate your own graphical explorations. But I'm not going to turn you into Leonardo da Vinci. I'm sorry. Oh, there's been some additions to this. I can't. I, I, I you, cre <laughs> you created it. <laughs> Rusty Russell has <laughs> self-assessed D plus stick to programming. <laughs> I think that's an excellent house, Rusty. I think you're being very hard on yourself. Yeah, well, I would, I would expect that, Arabella. Shh, don't, we don't tell him, right? Okay. So, has everyone now finished their house? Yep? Okay, great. So now what I'm going to do... Oh, sorry, an important question. Does everyone actually have Inkscape installed on a device? Yes. Okay. And is it open and ready to play? Okay, great. So the very blank canvas you can see on the screens in front of you, not me, um, I'm going to start to reveal toolbars and what have yous, toolbars and widgets. So I have brought a mouse. Who? Did anyone bring a mouse? Some people brought a mouse. There is a spare pointing device of some sort there. It will be easier if you have a pointing device, but if you just have your trackpad or whatever your pointer is, making do. So, this is the blank canvas. I'm going to the view menu and I am going to turn on, go to show hide, I'm going to turn on the tool, the toolbox. Oops, that wasn't the toolbox, but anyway. Try that again. Toolbox. So now I have down the left-hand side of the page the toolbox. Now, because of the vagaries of projectors and screens, some of my tools are hiding underneath this little arrow. So gradient, dropper, and connector for me are hiding. Yours may already, yours may be visible. If you're doing this on your phone, Paul, I'm going to be very, ah, very good. Um, 
So depending on your screen resolution, usually when I'm not projecting, I, I've got access to those. Um, what I accidentally turned on before were the tool controls. That's up here. And they change depending on which tool I have selected. And that's one of those aha moments for Inkscape. When you select a tool, you can do different things with it. And so that, that bar at the top, I'm just going to turn it off again. I'm going to re, there you go, tool controls bar. So on the left here, I have my, um, my tools. Does everyone can see their own tools? Yep. Um, this is one of the things, if you've played with your Inkscape at all, it may be set up slightly differently because it's quite configurable. And I will confess, I've forgotten how it comes exactly out of the box. So, sorry about that. So, tools. And then I'm going to turn back on the tool controls bar. So, this top one is the pointer. This is the node tool. This is the tweak tool. I'm going to, you know, zoom in or out. What might that be? It's the magnifying tool. Huzzah. Um, next, we have the measurement tool. Then we have one of my favourites. Create rectangles and squares. F4. Create 3D boxes. Probably one of my least favourite tools, I will confess. Create circles. Also accessed via F5. And this is absolutely hands down my favourite tool. Create stars and polygons. <laughs> and um, if I get a little bit lost in stars and polygons land a little later on, please bring me back down to earth. Then we have the spirals tool. And then the next three are all for drawing lines of different sorts. So we have the pencil freehand lines, the pen tool for Bezier curves and straight lines, the calligraphic or brush strokes tool, which is lovely, the text tool, because quite often you do want text in your images, um, the spray objects by sculpting or painting tool, erase existing paths, fill bounded areas, and then secret my secret squirrel ones, they're not secret for you, I'm sure, gradient, dropper, and connector. Now, enough noise from me. Let's get over to doing by you. I would like you to build some basic, basic skills now. I want you to draw a square. But I'm going to ask you to draw five squares in five different ways with different tools. You can help each other here. You can discover this together. But a square, there's one that's really obvious, and I'll, just, I'll demonstrate that one first. But feel free to go and explore while I draw five squares with five different tools. OK, so number one, guess. The square tool, very good. And this is simply click and drag. Now, Depending on the clicking and the dragging, I can do whatever I like. Now, if I, if I actually use some modifying keys, like, for instance, the control key, I can strain the proportions. I'm getting a perfect square. But if I tug at that a little bit, I get a golden ratio, 2 to 1, 3 to 1, and it just... Which is quite cool. That's using the control key. And also this way, too. If I let go of the control key, I'm like, whatever. Awesome source. OK? Now that I also have this um, crazy rectangle and I've released the mouse, I've got a little square at the top left and a little square at the, the bottom right and a circle in the top right. Now I'm going to click on that circle and it's just gone a little red, which means I'm on target. And now I can round my corners. Witchcraft. Witchcraft. Stop you betcha. All right. And now the other two, the other two allow you to basically just make adjustments on the, you know, the size there. This is one of those ones where doing is easier than saying words about what it is. And so Nick's here to tell me that the accessibility, the alt tag for what I'm doing right now, I have no idea how you. 
<laughs> no idea. All right, so uh, I'm just going to delete that because I've gone completely up, out of bounds. I'm going to my view menu and I'm going to zoom back to fit my page on my screen and I'm going to draw another square using the control key like so. Square one. So far, so good. Has everyone successfully created a square with the square tool? Yes? yes. yes. Does anyone still need more time? We're, we're doing this together, people. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna stay together on this. Yes? Okay. So, how are we going to create our second square-like object? Now, we... Yes? A really, really thin cube. I just don't want to use the cube tool just I know, yet. That's why I said it. All right. It, well, that's going to be six then. Six. Sorry. Pencil tool. Yes. Polygon tool. Yes. We can make a four-pointed star and then pull up a little dot. Indeed, that's a polygon tool. So that's that's where I was going next. So we're going to go to our star. Oh, sorry, Paul. We could copy and paste one. Also, so that's seven. We've got now seven squares. I hadn't even thought of that. We could take the text tool and use a symbol font. Awesome. All right, so just to bring it back into now, okay. So polygons, they're just shapes. So I'm going to the star and polygon tool. I'm selecting that. And if I just click and drag, I get a five-pointed star. That's not what I want though, right? So I'm going to turn that from a star into a polygon up here. Click. And change the corners from a five to four. Now the thing about, so why would you use a square, why would you bother having a whole square tool if you can just create a poly, like a four-sided polygon? Well, they have different kind of magical properties. Like you saw the corners and the rounded corners, right? Well... Now, this is where I might need to be talked down if I get a little bit crazy here. Again, those modifying tools. So, bottom right for me, there's a little square and that's my indicator that magic can happen. Right? And now if I use the control key, it doesn't go round and round in circles. But if I shift to the shift key, this is where I get lost and mesmerised. Fortunately, I've only got four corners and I'm not going to get too lost. So I'm back, I'm back, sorry, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. All right, so that is your polygon tool and I'm going to reselect that and I'm just going to use this little brush over here on the right to remove all of my crazy manipulations there and set it back to four and polygon. Do I... Are you like me? Do I need to let you play with that for a little bit? Okay. Oh, colours. So that's working ahead. But if you want to jump to play with colours, at the very bottom of your screen there's a colour palette. And if you've got any object selected and you click a colour, that changes the colour. There's also the gradient tool is worth playing with, Emily. Oh, one more thing. Oh, Robin, yes. Where did the brush come from? Excellent question. All right, so currently I'm selected with the, po with the pointer tool and not the actual polygon tool. So once that's selected, then the tool controls for that tool become apparent and there's your brush. No? no? Not for you? Please hold while I attend to your peculiarities. Let's see. So click the polygon tool. Yep. No brush, maybe that. Yeah. Okay, so a slight, a slight variation. On Robin's, um, on Robin's Inkscape, her icon is not a brush, but a little kind of backwards undo type button, uh, icon. Just if that's for you and you're wondering where your brush was, thanks Robin, that's a good, good to know. I wouldn't have, I didn't know about that, so that's good. Reset and shape parameters. Does it say the same thing? Yes. Use Inkscape Preferences tools to change defaults. Now, one more thing about both of these. I'm going to switch back from the, the polygon tool to the pointer tool. And when I select 
either of these, first off, you'll see, please note carefully, the direction of the arrows. So see how they're all kind of pointing outwards right now? Yes? If I click again, they're now kind of pointing round. And this means I can rotate. And you'll see that there is a crosshair in the middle of my square. I can click on that crosshair and drag it to the corner and that becomes my axis of rotation. Yeah? How did you get into rotation mode again? How did I get into rotation mode again? Who else needs to know? Or was Paul the only one not listening? <laughs> You click on it and you click on it again, that's right. So you just toggle between rotate and not rotate. So the arrows are pointing outwards, it's not rotate. Click again and the arrows come all sort of rounded corners and then you can go around in circles. Yes, yes. You can also skew it by using the uh, arrows on the side. Bonus points, you can also skew it by using the arrows on the side, like so. And it skews on the centre axis as well. So just have a little play because these are shapes. Now, it's, we're, not, we're not creating um, a square right now, but just to sort of complete the set, feel free to create a circle if you want as well. Hang on, wait, 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 wait. One question at a time. Yes. Can you just um, backtrack to where you were sort of like pulling the edges in and out and was going all global? Distorting? Yeah. Oh, Cloverleaf. So that's on the polygon tool. Who else can remember how I did the sort of kaleidoscopic effect? Pull the modifier key and then you drag the, the little points around. Can you remember which modifier key? Uh, Control and shift. And even without modifier, you can get a kaleidoscope if you drag them in the right direction. If you drag them in the right direction. So it's shift, um, shift will on the, where's my thing? Tool engaged, right. So you have to have the polygon tool engaged, and I do because you can tell there's a little star on my pointer. And then I'm looking for the control point, which is the little square at the bottom there. And I click on that with this mouse I'm still getting used to, and I can rotate it. Now if I hold down the shift key, I can get that wacky, wacky fun times effect. Yep? All right. Um, what was the other, there was another question that I had in my head. All right, so quickly on circles, even though we're drawing squares, because the important point with these shapes or primitives is that they have these control, the, these, these properties, I guess, that you can, you can play with. So with, with the circle or ellipse tool, um, again, control will constrain it to make it a circle. Um, again, you get control points. So um, the two squares at the top and the left-hand side will affect the, sh the size and shape. But this little circle has some magic properties too. And if you drag that with your pointer outside the circle, you get a Pac-Man. And if you drag, continuing to drag, but are inside the circle, you get a slice off. So pie or a slice off it, like so. And again, your control key will constrain things slightly. Shift doesn't really do much magic when it comes to the circle, which is why I don't love it as much as I love the star and polygon tool, to be honest. I am judgmental about my Inkscape tools. All right, so I'm going to get rid of the circle because I'm talking about squares. And I'm going to set my fancy clover back to being a square. Five to four and polygon. It's a little bit, it's a little bit skew if. So I might just try and straighten it up again. Oh, hello. Maybe not. Maybe I'll just do a new one. That's better. All right, so that's one and two. Now, three, we're going to move on to freehand and just draw a square. Just grabbing your pencil tool, it's just like bang, right? That's not very square. I can also click, click, 
actually, sorry, click with the pencil tool, double click, double click, double click, and then back to my starting point, click. And that's the freehand tool. It's probably a little bit easier with the pen tool, the draw up easier curves and straight lines. Now, if I hold down control, again, our friend for constraining things, click and holding down control, click, click, click. Oh, I didn't really kind of get that lined up very well, did I? And then double click to end it. So, there's a stray line I'm going to get rid of. Now, why, why might we choose one or the other of those? They're kind of getting a pretty similar result, right? Can anyone want to, want to pose some thoughts about why you might choose one or, or another of those? So you can mess with it after you've drawn it? So you can mess with it after you've drawn it. Yep. Anyone else? Yes? Because I get paid by the hour for my tutorials. This is LCA, Rusty. What do you reckon? <laughs> um, any other thoughts? Why would you choose one of these methods over, over another? There's no, like, I want to say there's no right or wrong answers here. Why I'm asking you, you to, to sort of pose this is because you can do it in so many different ways. It's worth thinking about the, the properties that you get from one method over another. Yes, Emily. Excellent. Depending on how they're stored, they might create a smaller SVG file, less nodes. And I'm going to demonstrate that right now. So I'm switching to the node tool, which is um, F2, if you want a keyboard command. And I'm just going to hover over each of these um, squares right now. So this was our original square. And if I select it with the node tool, I get my, my square controls. If I double click it, I'm telling you lies, so I'm not going to do that again. And I've switched to the polygon tool, I get my controls. Now if I switch to the Bezier, I've got the five control points that I set. And the freehand, I also have, I only have four. But if I was to do the freehand perhaps a little more roughly, perhaps kind of like that, I'll probably have a whole bunch more. See that? Because there's a lot more information in, that scrib in this scribble than in this scribble. Scribble being a technical term, of course. OK, so that's the four obvious ones. I actually came up with a fifth idea for creating a square. And I'm going to use, I'm going to zoom in now on my freehand close tool here. If I can remember how. Here we go. Zoom. Selection. So I've zoomed right in, and this is the scalable part of scalable vector graphics. It doesn't matter how much we zoom, that's going to be nice and crisp. I'm going to activate the palette, which is colours. They've just appeared at the bottom of my screen. And I'm going to activate my scroll bars. And hell, while I'm there, my rulers and my snap controls, and most importantly, my commands bar, which has got a whole bunch of extra things for me. So now I'm going to zoom back in on that selection, and I'm going to activate my palette, my colory things. Where do they go? I've lost them. That's not what I wanted. Not them. There we go. Fill and stroke. So what I actually want to do is make the stroke um, bigger. And in this case, stroke style, I'm going to increase the width to... Let's go five pixels. Great. And now I'm going to select down here, hiding for me, but probably accessible to you, is the paint bucket. 
and I have now got a paint bucket tool. And I'm going to click and I have filled that space with colour but that has created a new object and is my fifth square. Okay? Now, there are a couple of really clever suggestions by other people. One was to use text and find a font that has squares in it, which is great. And there was another one, which I, I'm, f I'm forgetting. Was it you, Tommy? Is it another oh, suggestion? The cube. So the cube, this is the cube tool, and I'm going to just do one. But I've never found a particularly great use for it. But it, by all means, it's there and play with it. But I didn't want to go into it in an absolute beginner's thing. There's some, uh, where's, um, Alan is here. So there's, you know, parameters and stuff that you might want to play with if you were doing scientific data and you were trying to represent volume and all sorts of cool and funky stuff. But I've never gone there. So I'm just going to plead that this is a beginner's session and Cube is an advanced tool. Yes, Ian. I, I was trying to think of extracts. So this one is slightly more complicated, but it does You can, right? Yes, Emily. Can you make a line and then change the thickness of the line, like the density is the same as the length? Wait, say that again. Can you draw a short line and then change like the, the width of the line? Like Great suggestion. Okay, so yes. Okay, so let's have a play with making. Oh, I'm just gonna. By the way, I'm using, and this is why mouses are great for this. I've done a middle click and I'm dragging my page down. But I got that on my scrolly wheel and I, I've got no idea how I would do that on the touchpad on my laptop. So I'm going to create a line, start here, control and double click to end it. And I'm going to make it a little wider. Let's go with say 10 pixels so it's a bit easier to grab and see, right? Now. I've selected that, I'm going to the node tool again and I'm going to click on convert selected objects stroke to paths and all of a sudden it has control points. So I'm going to zoom in on that magnifying tool, click and drag around it. It's way bigger now, back to my node tool and you can just see the nodes, hopefully. And I'm selecting those two and I'm holding down control and I'm going to make a rough <coughs> square. And zoom. It's not quite square. And a little bit there. So now if I did actually want to make that actually square so that the, the dimensions were the same, how would I do that? So I'm going to shift from the node tool that I have here to the select, the first one, F1. And now I've actually got the ability to say, okay, so it should be 250 wide by 250 high, done, we have a square. Huzzah! <laughs> Magic. Okay, so I've done a, a fair bit of talking just now. What I want to do is let, let you just have a little bit of quiet playtime with the various tools. I've used a square because it is a fundamentally kind of familiar shape, um, but feel free to go crazy now, go play with the polygon tool and... and, and experience the wonder and awe that, that it is. Um, and, and just sort of see what you, what, you know, the properties of them, get a feel for it. How many people had some kind of square object in the house that they drew with a pen and paper? Or rectangular at least? Well, I know Rusty did, I examined his work, it was excellent. So there is one more draw, um, line-based tool that we haven't really played with. And it sort of has properties that Emily's great suggestion kind of led me to demonstrate. So I'm just going to quickly play with that. This is the calligraphy tool. Again, one of my favourites. It's just beautiful. If I just do a quick line for that and have a look at the node tool, you see it automatically creates a shape. It's a very special sort of line. Whereas the other two create a single, a single path the calligraphy tool actually creates a whole connected path. Whoops, I've gotten myself 
tangled up. There we go. So feel free to have a play with the calligraphy tool while you're at it. Yes. When you did the lines and then you grabbed the notes, yep. how did you make sure that you could drag both notes even though they were holding only one? Which button? Ah, uh, very good, very good. So what I did with that, this object here, Ian's asked, so how did I get the two nodes to be able to drag it down? And I may have gone over that a little bit too quickly. So I'm going to do it again. So I used what we call the rubber band effect. So I've created that line. Um, I want to make it bigger and stuff again. Uh, actually, I can probably do it on this one. So back to the node tool. And so you can select one at a time. Right, or you can select one and control click to select. Oh, no, not control. Yeah. Undo, shift, shift. shift. Okay. to select two at a time. But you can also do this, Ian. If you just watch, yeah. I'm clicking up here in the space on the node tool, and I can rubber band around a, a couple, and that's what I did. Yeah. And I can rubber band around these two, and that then means I can select multiple ones. So shift click to multiple yeah. select. Or rubber band. Yes, Emily. So when you're, uh, so I'm playing with the point select thingy, uh, that one. Yes. And um, trying to edit points along a calligraphy curve, like yep. what you've got there. Yep, yep. And it lets me select multiple points in a box. I'm wondering if there's a way of selecting like along a curve or something, because putting out those boxes is kind of tedious. Yeah, excellent question. So um, let me play, say, with this one, because I've got lots of curves on here. I'm going to zoom in on this selected object. And Emily's asked, is there a way to select lots of points along rather than, than one by one? If I click and drag across a bunch, I can get a square, but I'm wondering if I have a non-square selection. Um, so this is a bit of a, an annoyance of my setup. The Alt key is meant to let you draw a line through things to select them. However, Ubuntu and whatever window thingy I'm operating, God rest its soul, won't let me do that. It does that instead. Yeah. And I, haven't, I, have, I have done searching and my Google foo has failed me to, to figure out how to undo this. But if you are not so um, constrained as I, if you hold down the Alt key and you click and drag with the selection tool, this one, you should... You should be able to draw a line, which then lets you select through all sorts of random things in whatever order you want. Yes, Robin? That's a Linux window manager thing. It's a... I, I feel like at Linux Conf IU, I should be able to get this solved. Yeah. But I'll just zen. It's working for me. It's working for you. Yeah. Just install X mode out and learn Haskell. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your very constructive <laughs> contribution there, Paul. <laughs> It works. It works in in Arch Linux as well. Awesome. So there is hope for me. I will be able to get this solved. This is awesome. So um, yes. So does that sort of uh, Emily? Did that? Are you so constrained or? Yes. Hold Alt and then click and drag. Let me come over and, and, and have a little have a little play. Excuse me. Hang on one tip. Let's see. 